Hey everyone, it's Clint. Welcome to Sweetcast. Um, today we want to talk about being a jerk as a comic creator. This is a, an important topic because um, I'm coming to the realization that I'm a comic creator. It's something I've always wanted to do. I've worked really hard to hone my craft and get good at it and all that kind of stuff. And then there's this interesting conflict between having a YouTube channel and picking a point of view because it's always been what I've done on this YouTube channel is pick a point of view. I, I'm going to continue to do that. I think it's important. But then also uh, crossing the line into being an unprofessional uh, comic creator. And so this is something I'm going to be working through a little bit and I appreciate everyone's input there. But this is a larger conversation, I think, that's important to have. And that is what should comic creators do to be professional? Uh, this is after all, one of the biggest problems that Comicsgate has identified in the comic book industry with many creators, not all creators, there are some you know professional people out there, but many of them have really failed at just being a decent human being um, or at least just getting along with people in a, in a professional way. But before we get into that, I just want to remind you that my book, Downcast, is on Indiegogo right now. We're crushing it, so thank you very much. 450 backers. We have $16,568. Uh, this thing, it kind of goes up and down a little bit, but moving forward this week is going to be awesome. We're, we've got a lot of momentum, so this is great. Really, really strong start. So if you haven't backed it yet, please consider doing so. It's in the link in the description below. All right, so if you didn't catch me live last night, I was talking to my friend, Douglas Ernst. I always have great conversations with him. We were talking about modern art and a couple other things, and um, it, it, it's always a good conversation. Uh, and so it was interesting to me because we talked a little bit off air just about professionalism and, and things of that nature. And so I was looking for a topic for a video and actually stumbled upon Doug Ernst's blog. And so he made this little video about 2019 and I wanted to share a little bit with you. I'm going to snipe just a little bit of this video so we can hear what he says here. The Doug abides. So if that's, if you are not into drama, if you don't want anything to do with that sort of stuff, then join me in my philosophy. Anyway, guys, thanks again for everything. I'll be back with a new video in the near future and I'll see you later. Okay. You get it. Uh, basically the Doug abides it's based on, uh, the dude abides, but, um, the big thing has been conflict between creators um, inside Comics Gate, outside Comics Gate. I'm not sure that it really matters. There's just conflict that happens, and some of it sometimes very publicly. Now, uh, this is going to be a very honest assessment of YouTube. YouTube is a two edged sword. YouTube is a fantastic tool, it can do a lot of great things, it can connect a lot of people. And honestly, for me, it's been an invaluable tool and I'm going to continue making videos. And I also actually quite enjoy it. Having said that in every single online community, uh, where there is a, a strong YouTube presence, it only comes down to a matter of time before you get feuding factions, uh, feuding YouTube creators, that kind of thing. Stuff comes up. For example, I was part of, well, so when I was doing, well, you'll look at Downcast, right? They've got their window washers, okay? So I like to do research pretty thoroughly into topics that I'm going to write about. And I looked at some window washing stuff and kind of actually went down a bit of a rabbit hole. And I found online window washing uh, communities. They'd get on, they'd, you know, go on forums and, and they have YouTube channels and they go on and they help each other out. And it can actually be a really, really helpful thing. And at the same time, when you get YouTube personalities, uh, they all have platforms and somebody offends somebody else somewhere online, you get stuff like this. Oh, I thought I had a video for you. I'm so disappointed. Uh, so there was a, there was a video, uh, I think it was called the truth about Luke, the window cleaner. I realized that this is super specific <laughs> of a niche, uh, but this, there's this YouTube channel. If you've, for window clean i know i know i know i get it it's weird uh but there's a niche for everything luke the window cleaner he shows like how to clean windows and he'll actually do like little videos and stuff of him cleaning windows that are like you know new age music and he's kind of a hipster 
a big old long beard and all that kind of jazz. And, um, you know, whatever. That's cool. There's YouTube content everywhere for everybody. Uh, the, the problem is that even in something like this, where it's just this little niche online, uh, there was another guy that had a YouTube channel that was tailored toward cleaning windows. Um, but he, I don't even remember his name, but I can't find him anymore. He had a video, him and Luke, the window cleaner had beef. And I read all about this on their window cleaning forum, uh, that you know, a lot of professional window cleaners get into. And it was so strange. Uh, to see this this whole beef unfold and I guess it started on the forum and it spilled over into YouTube and pretty soon they were calling each other out publicly and it was this big thing and there were memes and uh, you know it was it was all this thing and it, it kind of tainted window cleaning for I guess people in in the industry okay so this is really obscure really strange example I think for most people but this just illustrates how it happens this is what happens uh when you have some kind of a platform a lot of people i mean relatively a lot of people he's got ten thousand subscribers they listen to what you say and i'm not don't get me wrong i'm not blaming luke the window cleaner in this i didn't you know i'm not picking sides i wasn't following it all that interesting this isn't my thing okay my point is once you have a platform you can speak there's such an opportunity to mess up and to say the wrong thing or to offend somebody. And um, then pretty soon people are picking sides. And is it really necessary? Now, don't get me wrong. If you have a YouTube channel and your goal is to criticize comic books, to criticize YouTube creators, whatever it is, if you're a critic, that is your job. I think you should be a critic. That's great. If you're a consumer, you're watching videos, uh, you have all the power in the world to be critical. That's cool. I think that should happen. What I'm saying is, though, I think there are some of us, like in my position, where this industry outside of the industry is growing and it's becoming, uh, really, I mean, it's becoming its own industry. It's becoming a new set of pros. And so some of the complaints, many of the complaints, like here, uh, PR disaster comic book pros are not professional. That is a legitimate criticism. So I've got to think, if this is a criticism that, that's being levied at comic creators, shouldn't I be holding myself to that standard? Because yes, I have a YouTube channel and I'm going to pick a, pick a position. I'm going to pick a point of view. And yes, sometimes I'm going to be critical, but I also should be professional. Um, and I think that's, that goes for a lot of people. I mean, really, if you, there should be some level and I understand People define that a little bit differently as to what is professional. I can only define it for me and what I see. Uh, again, I'm going to be, always be picking a point of view, and I will try to differentiate myself or a comic skate or, or you know whatever springs up out of this in the future. Uh, I will want to differentiate it from the current industry and what they're doing wrong, but I also want to do that in a professional way. Okay, so here's this article. This brings us full circle. Uh, comic book school is the website. This was actually interesting. Don't be a jerk in your comic career. That sounds like really, really plain and obvious advice. So he tells this story here about how he, um, I guess writes comics. He got into a situation where he, uh, talked to an artist. Let's see artist X and I had talked about working together. Hey, I even wrote a script for him, but for some reason, this younger, eager artist never managed to turn in any pages. I think I got a nice sketch, but after that, nothing, nothing. No emails, no phone calls, no explanation. And then one day he announced he was going to concentrate on his proposal to Marvel. So I'd wasted a few weeks writing up a complete script, which was tailored to his art skills. Needless to say, I was bummed and I, I'd wasted my time and energy on a project that never saw completion. I know that feeling. In fact, I've probably, I've had this feeling more often than I've had the, the feeling of completing a project that I'd written and put all this effort into. And I, that is, you know, that's part of the struggle, I guess, of being a writer in comics, some of it, and especially toward the beginning, um, for sure that happens. Uh, so the important thing to take out of this is when you're working, you've got two things. You, if you're working with fans uh, or readers, consumers, uh, whatever you want to call that, backers um, in some cases, 
they expect a certain level of professionalism and a certain level, uh, you know, of how a comic creator should treat them, especially if they're putting their money into the project. That is a big deal. But on another side of that coin, it also is important how comic creators treat each other um, in that you can seriously damage future uh, creative prospects, right? If you're burning bridges, that can definitely happen. If you burn bridges, it's possible that you're never going to work with a certain artist or writer again, or they're never going to work with uh, someone else you know. Like There's all these all sorts of connections. And again, if we go back to the YouTube thing, this is all amplified because it happened so publicly. And I'm not just going to say YouTube is to blame. Um, again, it, it does a lot of really great things. But also Twitter is another thing where things can get really amplified um, and, and you know totally blown out of proportion and really damage not like friendly relationships. I'm talking about professional working relationships that could actually be really good. Okay, here's another one. Then Tom perked up and mentioned yet an another young talent he'd found online, and that was it. That's how an aspiring artist with potential lost a job without ever knowing it. All it took was that one short phone call. Okay, and so here's assuming, too, that that uh, writer had money to pay <laughs> said artist. Um, here's the important part. I didn't go out of my way to ruin Artist X's reputation. Heck, I never thought about artist x anymore until my friend mentioned his name and as you know the comic book business is built on names and relationships that's absolutely true this is why a blacklist in comics is so uh it's so damaging uh once somebody doesn't like you they spread the word pretty soon you can't get work anywhere that's a big deal i don't want to be part of this and i think that you know more creators should be very careful about this um, I'm, I'm just starting to realize that there is, you know, this, this is important stuff we're talking about here. A big business that's small. That's right. It's very small. When I was trying to break into the business, comic books seemed to be unfathomably large. And maybe at the time, maybe it was. It was a bigger business 20 years ago, but now comic, the comic book industry is a cozy little business where most everybody knows everybody else. I've seen a lot of people come and go over the years, but one thing remains constant. People talk. Does this sound familiar to you? People talk. Um, and all I'm saying, I'm not going to, this, this whole article was, it was interesting. Comicbookschool.com. Don't jerk. <laughs> it's don't be a jerk. Don't hyphen jerk. Um, this, you know, it was interesting. Um, people talk. People should be saying good things. Uh, and again, I don't get, don't jump to any conclusions. I'm not actually talking about anybody in particular. Genuinely, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about the way that I think that pros should act, and I believe that a lot of you that are uh, listening now actually think pros should hold themselves to some kind of professionalism when they're working with other creators or when they're working with their fans. I'm just saying that now that Comicsgate has grown up. Um, and it's bloomed into this beautiful butterfly. Now there is sort of a new, a new wave, a new second wave of, I think, professionalism um, that I want to embrace. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Let me know what you think people can do to be professional creators and, and treat each other professionally. And if you haven't yet, I would really appreciate it if you took a look at Downcast and you know if you've got a little bit of money burning a hole in your pocket uh, this is really a good story it's about blue collar teens that use the power of gravity to fight against a corrupt city for their father's life uh, don't hesitate to back it if that sounds interesting to you and i will see you next time